Welcome to Ministry in Motion, where we explore best practices for your ministry in the 21st century. I'm Anthony Kent. And I'm Derek Morris. And whether you're a pastor of a congregation or a lay leader in your local church, God wants you to be a great Christian leader. And Anthony, I'm excited about the topic today. Well, this is your topic, Derek. It really is. Um, learning from master preachers. And you know, you've, you've for good reason, very good reason, acquired a reputation as a great preacher. And I'd like to explore with you how you learnt the skill, the art of powerful biblical preaching. Well, let me preface what I'm about to say with, with something that may startle people. I have been studying great preachers, met with them, talked with them over the past 15 years. And I've discovered that the great preachers take preaching very seriously. Uh, it's not just that, well, there's great preachers and then there's average preachers. They are very intentional. And I believe that we can be intentional too in learning lessons from them that will help us to be all that God would have us be as preachers, whether we're full-time pastors or, or lay preachers. Fantastic, Derek. Well, we'll explore this further with you. Stay right where you are. We'll be right back with more Ministry in Motion. Welcome back to Ministry in Motion. Our topic today is learning from master preachers. And our special guest is our co-host, Derek Morris. Derek, thanks again. Well, I'm excited to, to be talking about a topic that's very dear to my heart. I believe to all pastors and, and, and lay leaders want to learn how to be more effective as biblical preachers. Well, let's trace some of your journey. You began at a very young age to hear preaching. <laughs> yeah, tell us about that as, as a child. What, what, what was your journey? You know, it's interesting. When I was seven years old, I was the narrator for a, a class play. Right. And I was so short, I had to stand on a stool in order to be the narrator for the play. But my second form teacher said, I knew when I saw you standing there that someday you would be a preacher. Wow. Which is very interesting. Because and you were I, how old? I was seven. Wow. But uh, when, when, my, uh, when, my, when I was six years old, my father uh, left his profession and went to study to become a pastor. Okay. And, and I just had a conversation with him recently because I realized that my father was an effective preacher. Mm. And I asked him where he learned. And he shared with me the name of a master preacher who had been a mentor to him. I, I just knew that I grew up listening to sermons that had clarity, had progression of thought that, that made sense to me. And fed you. I didn't realize that it wasn't that way everywhere. Yeah. But I, I would have to thank God for a pastor father mm. who took preaching seriously and, and learned from those who had gone before him some wisdom mm. from master preachers. So I would say that was my earliest influence was, was ha having the, the blessing of yes. growing up, going to church and listening to some solid biblical preaching. Right, okay. So you, you heard it as a child and you imbibed it and you're watching and learning from, from that experience. Then I presume you went off to college or, and did some theological training. And as I was in college, uh, I went, I, I was in, in near London. Mm -hmm. I went to London because there was a great British preacher there by the name of John Stott. Ah, yes. And John Stott, it, it, it fascinated me that when many churches in England were empty mm -hmm. or were museums, yes. that All Souls Church there in Langham Place was full. Mm. Young adults with their Bibles, and uh, later I had the opportunity, one of the master preachers I got to study was John Stott. Wow. But, but I just knew that something out of the ordinary was happening with this powerful biblical preacher. Mm. And uh, so that was another important influence on my life as, as a, young, a young adult. Right, okay. So you entered into, you re received a call for ministry, went to and received some theological training, and presumably somebody offered you a job. Where, how did you grow from there, Derek? Well, you know, as I look back, Anthony, 
And I don't know if this is the experience of many who've gone into a preaching ministry, either full time or as a lay preacher, but really my training was rather poor. Uh, that's not good news. I, it, it isn't. And I think sometimes those who are given the assignment of teaching preaching, mm -hmm. um, are, they had a little room in their, in their schedule, you know, and so, well, you take the preaching class rather mm -hmm. than finding a person who has special training. And what I think is even more important is a passion. Yeah. Because what I believe we need is people who will not only inform us, but inspire us. Yes. They become models, mentors that we can learn from and emulate. Mm. So I'm going to share uh, some of that journey where I found people and I said, God, what is it about this great preacher that is working so well? And we all love Jesus. Yeah, yeah. What is it that's working so well? And that set me on a journey, both in regular pastoral preaching and evangelistic preaching which is preaching to those who have not trusted Christ the Savior, and to learn from them mm -hmm. uh, pointers that would help, help me and, and then help others in their preaching too. So there was a, a switch that was flipped that gave you a desire to learn from the great preachers. That's right. And, you know, I think it has to be, you, you can read preachers like Wesley and Spurgeon, but, but that's, you know, that's a different time, a different culture where people would sit and listen to a sermon being read for 90 minutes or 120 minutes. Culture's changed. Yes. So I, I went searching for those that would be considered outstanding preachers. Mm. My, ma my first language is English. So I was looking in the English speaking world. Right. I thought, can I find some people who are considered outstanding preachers mm. and learn from them. And that led me to a study that was done at Baylor in the mid nineties, right. uh, where they identified the top, the most effective preachers in the English speaking language, top 12. Right. They, they interviewed 341 seminary teachers and editors of professional journals mm -hmm. and said, who do you consider to be the most effective preachers in the English speaking world? And they came up with a list of 12. Now, maybe some others should have been on that list and some deleted, yeah. but that gave me a pool okay. from which I said, I need to learn from some of these master preachers. Right. Would you, would you care to mention some that you... Well, you know, one of them was John Stott. This is the guy you went Who had been such to. a blessing yes. to me as, as a young uh, Christian. Right. And so I jumped on a plane and flew to London. I was living in America mm -hmm. already, but I flew to London. God opened the door for me to be able to meet with John Stott mm -hmm. and, and, and ask him, s learn some things about preaching from John Stott. And I would say that one hour had a profound impact on, on my preaching wow. ministry. Tell us about that. What, well, what did you take from that? I learned the art of double listening. He speaks about that in his book. Of course, he, he is, he's dead now, yes. but, but has left a, a great legacy. Mm. He speaks about that in, in his book, Between Two Worlds. Between Two Worlds, his great yes. preaching book. Yes. And he talks about the fact that we need to both listen to God and we do that primarily in his word. Right. And so uh, John Stott was a biblical preacher. Yes. But we also have to learn to listen to people. Maybe after the break, we can explore that. But yeah. a great preacher listens to God in the word and also listens to the people who will be the hearers. Oh, okay. Ah, so dual listening. That's the that's art a, of double listening. Yeah. Yeah. That's powerful. Well, Derek, we've, we've traced your journey. We've discovered one person that had a profound influence, well, at least two, your father, as, as well as John Stott. I'm interested in, in talking to you about evangelistic preaching, preaching that doesn't just reach the churched people in the church community, but looks beyond that. Could we explore that right after this break? Stay with us. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Ministry in Motion. Our topic today is learning from master preachers. And we have one with us today, Derek Morris. Well, Derek... I'm a student of, of master preachers and, and, and we can learn. Yes. And if we're going to study anyone, let's study the people who are really effective at what they do. Yes, yes. Now, Derek, in the New Testament, preaching wasn't just to a church community. The, the preaching that we see modeled there was to the, the wider general community, what we would typically call today evangelistic preaching. Mm -hmm. Tell us about evangelistic preaching. What, what, what does that involve? Well, when I had realized that I could learn so much from great preachers, mm -hmm. John Stott was just one example, yes. and, and, and just go away saying, if I could learn one or two powerful lessons that would help me, uh, I would move to another level under the mm -hmm. blessing of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you may even stumble across a person uh, whose whole methodology makes sense to you. Mm. And that person can actually become either a passive or maybe even an active mentor if, if you live near that person who can actually mentor you. Mm. That is a huge blessing. As I began to think about preaching not only to the churched, but what Will Willimon calls preaching to the unchurched, mm -hmm. uh, I sensed a great need for a mentor, okay. someone who would um, connect with the way I thought mm -hmm. And I studied several, and you know, this is not saying one is right, another is wrong, but you, you watch some person or you listen to them, of course, now we've got the blessing of video as well as audio mm -hmm. or text. Yes. And I would say, mm, that doesn't really connect, that doesn't work with my brain, that logical process. And then I stumbled across one preacher. Now, I grew up in a different country. I grew up in England. Yes. So when I came to America and began my pastoral and my evangelistic ministry here, I was not well acquainted with a great American preacher by the name of C.D. Brooks. Okay. But I began to listen to the presentations. This is before we had all of the mm -hmm. videos and DVDs. And in fact, it was so long ago, they were on cassette tapes. Ah, those days, and that's, yes. That's hi history for you. Yes. But I listened to an entire series by this great American preacher, C.D. Brooks, and I had never heard powerful evangelistic preaching mm. like that before. Mm. It was just, it connected with me somewhere deep in, in, my, in my soul. Yeah. Now, what I discovered, which, which we can explore uh, a little further, is as I listened to those, I was not just learning about what to say in evangelistic preaching, but how to say it. Mm. Because one of the things we learn from master preachers, and that's the great blessing of living in the 21st century where we have audio and video recordings, it's not just the words that are part of e effective communication, but how you say the words, right. what's happening with your voice, mm -hmm. and even more, I didn't have video for C.D. Brooks, but what's happening with your body, mm. your facial expressions, mm. your gestures? It's all communicating, it, isn't it? It's so important. Yeah. Well, what happened? I just had the first two, content and how the words were said, because I had an audio recording. Mm -hmm. But as I listened to, and I actually transcribed the entire Breath of Life series it's by C.D. Brooks. Brooks. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Um, I actually started to think like C.D. Brooks, and even to sound like him. Mm. Now, I'm not African-American, uh, but I, I began to hear the intonation and feel the passion yeah. that was in his voice, variety of volume and pitch. Talk about the breath of life, yeah. I, I, I had found a living mentor. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what I did, and, and for uh, one of our viewers, it could be someone else, yes. but I actually contacted C.D. Brooks and I said, Pastor Brooks, I've been so blessed by your preaching and I'm wondering if you would give me permission to take these, these sermons, audio sermons, and to transcribe them. And he told me to do something that I've told others to do. In, mm -hmm. in subsequent years. He said, take this message where you have an illustration that's similar to one that I'm using, put your illustration there. Okay. Then he said, see, this is an active mentor now. Yes, yes. And, but he's a great preacher. Don't, don't mm. choose a mentor who's not a master preacher. Mm. But then he said, if, you, if there's an illustration and you don't have one from your life experience, just use mine mm -hmm. and say, 
when Pastor Brooks was flying into Columbus, Ohio. Don't pretend it happened to you if yeah. it happened to him. Yeah. So I did this. I spent 400 hours, Anthony, but they were some of the best hours in my preparation for preaching. Right. And I transcribed the entire series. Again, what I didn't realize, I was not only learning what to say mm -hmm. and then contextualizing it with my own illustrations, but I was, I was learning the sound of great preaching. Mm. And I've been able to share with C.D. Brooks's permission that whole series with hundreds of students of evangelistic preaching and hundreds of pastors around the world who are saying, where could I go to learn some great preaching? What a blessing that has been, not only to my life, but to, to many other preachers who, who want to learn from a master preacher like C.D. Brooks. Yeah. So to put it into a nutshell, to be a good evangelistic preacher, find a good mentor. I think that that's extremely yeah. valuable. And listen, watch and learn and adapt their materials as your own. And, and if you can do that with their permission, if they're yes. still living. Yes. Because uh, Pastor Brooks said to me, he said, it's like boxing. Mm -hmm. He said, you don't hit hard all the time. This yeah. is powerful coaching. Yeah. He said, you know, it's like jab, jab, punch, you know. Uh, so I had someone who was coaching me, encouraging me, and, and more than that, Anthony, inspiring me. Wow. Inspiring me to go beyond mediocre and average and to, uh, to want to be all that God was calling me to be. That's powerful, Derek. Stay right with us. We'll be right back with more of Ministry in Motion. Welcome to Ministry in Motion. Our topic today is learning from master preachers and our guest is Derek Morris. Derek, resources for somebody that really wants to excel in preaching and, and make preaching a, a key part of their ministry, what would you recommend? Well, people could start from ground zero like mm -hmm. I did yes. and, and just look around and find a, a person who is preaching well. You can do that um, on the internet, on the web streaming, that type of thing. You can yes. find them in, in a church in your community where you hear there's a powerful biblical preacher. Go and learn from that person. Mm. One of the things that I did, remember I talked about those 12 uh, most effective preachers in the English speaking language. From the Baylor survey. Right. Yes. Uh, after I had had this conversation with John Stott, I was so blessed because I read everything he wrote on preaching before I met with him. Wow. that I thought, what if I could do that with some of these other people listed as top preachers? Mm -hmm. And so I did a, another interview with Haddon Robinson, okay. who later became my major professor in my doctoral program at Gordon-Conwell, a great preacher. He is. A he and is. again, it's wonderful when you have a teacher that not only informs you, but inspires you. Mm. Will Williman, who was then dean of the chapel at Duke, uh, now a bi bishop in the Methodist, United Methodist Church. Right. Uh, Gardner C. Taylor, great preacher from New York, Brooklyn, New York, mm. a, a master preacher. Some might consider one of the finest of the 20th century. So I put those together in the book, Powerful Biblical Preaching. Right. And this has not only six of those top 12, but a dozen other interviews, insights from master preachers, including the most important one that we've actually done a whole program on, and that is learning from the master preacher, Jesus. Yes. Chapter one of the book deals with nine lessons from the preaching ministry mm -hmm. of Jesus, mm -hmm. like preaching in the power of the Holy Spirit, bathing your preaching in prayer, mm -hmm. and so on. So that would be a great resource. And Derek, is, is there a way that we can make that available to Ministry in Motion viewers? Well, you said that we could do it. So okay. we're going to put it on the website. Right. ministryofmotion.tv yes. as a free electronic download, either as an ebook, and that's for people that have uh, an, an electronic uh, reader. Yeah, electronic yeah. reader, or as a PDF file for anyone who has a computer, that they could have uh, all 26 chapters. If they took just one or two, or find someone that they connect with mm -hmm. and learn several points, it will move their preaching to another level of effectiveness. 
Thank you, Derek. On behalf of the viewers, that's, that's a very generous gift that you made. And, you know, I think there's a felt need because, as you know, in a, a previous uh, situation, we, we offered an electronic copy and more than a thousand pastors uh, responded to that invitation. Yes, yes. But, but I think there are lay preachers, too. I just came back from, from Scandinavia and South Africa, and I think there's some gifted professional people mm. who are lay preachers in their local churches that would really benefit from that resource that we can download. Right. Let me just emphasize that. So if anybody, whether they're a pastor, a volunteer, somebody from the community can freely download this book, ministryinmotion.tv, and that's something they won't want to miss An e-book or a PDF file yeah. and learn. Yeah. So to be a master preacher, this is not something that we just achieve in a single weekend by attending a seminar. What, what can we do to make it a lifelong process where we continually grow? I think part of that is just an attitude of heart, mm -hmm. uh, of saying, I'm learning, but I have more to learn. Uh, for example, one of the resources I've also made available uh, is the, these sermons that I transcribed and edited, uh, originally written by C.D. Brooks. It's a whole series. Mm. I've, I've provided those to hundreds of people. Some of the people that ask for them are great preachers. Yeah. Uh, they may even be great evangelistic preachers. Right. So you say, well, why would they ask for this series of evangelistic sermons by a master preacher, even though it was <laughs> personalized by by mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. uh, and the answer is because they're lifelong learners. Yeah. They want to continue to learn. And so that, I believe, is an, is an attitude of heart that God will bless, continuing to learn. Yeah. And being teachable throughout mm -hmm. their ministry and not being content with plateauing or, or just leveling off. Now, Derek, we have a, a huge array of resources that we can offer on our website. We have your book, Powerful Biblical Preaching, that people can download. We also have your transcriptions of C.D. Brooks's uh, evangelistic sermons. How many of those are there? Oh, there's more than 20. And, and I've also got actually literally scores of sermons on a preaching website connected with the book, Powerful Biblical Preaching, all different topics for pastoral preaching. So there are so many resources that, that are available. And there's another resource that I'd like to make available. We're going to storm our viewers in this well, program. Well, bless them. Let's exactly. Say. Yeah. Ministry Magazine. It's a very good friend of Ministry in Motion. We work together. Ministry Magazine, it's been around since 1928 and it's blessed tens of thousands of pastors of multitudes of denominations in many different countries of the world. Currently, it's being received by pastors in more than 200 countries around the world. As a pastor you may be eligible to receive a complimentary subscription of this wonderful journal, Practical Ministry Journal. To be considered for a complimentary subscription, visit our website, ministryinmotion.tv. There you can access a feedback uh, opportunity. Write to us uh, and tell us about your ministry. Tell us about your church, what you're doing. We would really appreciate hearing from you. And we'll, we'll do our best to provide ministry as a journal to you. It'll come six times each year, every other month. And I'm sure it will bless you and your ministry. Derek, I'd like to thank you once again for being a guest and for being a co-host on Ministry in Motion. It's great your, to be with you, Your Anthony. insights have been really powerful today. And I'd like to thank you for joining us as well. May God richly bless you and your ministry.